you felt early that neither team had really kind of found the flow, but they uh, got in sync late in the half. And uh, what do you expect we'll see here in the in the second stanza? Well, I think that uh, Tubby Smith has got his team right where he wants it. He was able to use that that substitution pattern. He has been very effective with throughout the SEC tournament, and of course here in the NCAA tournament. And I think they'll continue that. He goes back with his starting five for Kansas again. I think that their key is number one, getting the ball in bounds and not getting caught on the press for some cheap baskets. And again, getting the ball inside here early in the second half. Take Chenoweth effective. There they go, down inside. Chenoweth flips it too strong. Bradford soars, puts it back off the glass for two. Good things happen to Kansas when they go inside. Final six minutes of the first half. Kansas hit a down stretch. Scored only six points the last six minutes and turned it over six times. That gave Kentucky that lead at halftime. Quick pass, Bradley to Padgett. He stuck. See, with Turner, you can afford to double down because he does not want to shoot the jump shot when the ball is thrown back out to him. Bradley, fade away, and a push off. He'll go to the line. Q had pretty good defense there. Didn't need the shove. You know, Billy, we were earlier dissecting the South. We're all top four seeds advanced. Not the case in the West. Look at this. The one, the five, the six, and the ten advance now to the regional in Phoenix. And had Weber State found a way, then that overtime game against Florida win. <laughs> Very close. Had they won, they would have had a Weber State-Gonzaga Sweet 16 matchup, meaning one of the two would have been just one game away from going to the Final Four. Well, Jim, one of the things that I love about it is that nobody floats you forward. This is not college football. You know, you've got to play the games. You've got to prove that on that given day, you're the better team. And here's the press. Very effective. Nobody coming back to meet you with the ball. And they have to take another timeout. A minute into the second half, they had that 20 that they burned with just 1.4 to go in the first half. They're out of 20s now. Jim, one of the things that uh, jumps out at you when you look at the halftime stats are the, are the field goal shooting percentages for Kansas, 48%, and for Kentucky, 50. Now, these are two teams that hold their opponents below 40% shooting, so pretty effective first-half offense. Nice distribution of the ball as well when you look at who scored. Not everybody got in the point total here. Boshi and Turner. Freshman defended by senior. Another turnover for Kansas. They let an eight-point lead slip away in the first half. And now Kentucky with a three-point lead just a minute into the second half here in New Orleans. Oh, she's getting an education here. When you get by these guys on the press, you got to start setting up in your half-court set. He tries to break for the big play all the time. Just not effective against uh, experienced players like Kentucky has on the floor. Bradley comes out of bounds, but no, he traveled. He traveled. A lot of nice low post moves by Bradley. Ole Miss with a three-point lead over the one seed in this Midwest bracket at halftime. There's Bradford showing a touch from the outside. We didn't see that when he was young. And how about Purdue, 15 ahead of Miami at halftime. Again, that East bracket could have only one team ranked into the regional round. Duke, the number one in three non-top 25 teams at the Meadowlands, and Purdue holds on. Uh, Gene Cady, whose club really was struggling in February. Well, some people wondering if they even belonged in the NCAA tournament. He's had so many years where he's taken the Glenn Robinson-type teams and say, gee, he just didn't quite get there this year. Looks like he may get there with a club that was struggling. And you saw the Miami score where earlier today, Wally Zerbiak and the Red Hawks ousted Utah. And they're becoming uh, another one of these great Cinderella themes. And Zerbiak uh, certainly becoming uh, a hero in this tournament. Well, I really think Roy Williams has got to set the freshman down. He's trying to do so much by himself. He's costing his team dearly. Evan scores on the inside. There it goes again. Very dangerous pass. Bradford. Would have been some basket had it gone. Kansas ball. Yeah. 
So 43 40 Kentucky two and a half into this second half. And I think for a couple of reasons Kansas would want to play this game half court at a time. Kentucky's got more depth. Ryan Robertson ties it with a three. And there's what Kansas does well when they can play half court at a time and not get in the running game with Kentucky. Very effective. It's the seventh tie of this game. Evans in the lane turns around for two. Amazing shot over the seven footer. Bradford open shot. An easy one for the Jayhawks. Attacking against the press. Roy Williams obviously has a different game plan. For a moment there, this was the pace of that game back in 1989 where yeah. Kansas scored 150. Yeah, but I, I just think that that's uh, exactly what Tubby would like to see happen. And there is a foul on Pugh. Doesn't get called. Runs through the screen. Pugh and Chenoweth both have their, their fists up asking to come out of the game. As I said, this plays into Tubby's hands. You try to run with this team. Boshi. No, sir. And a reach in on Bradford. Pugh is exhausted out there. He has to come out. He's just trying to get his breath here. And we're, we're only into four minutes in the, in the second half. And he's going to sit down. And Tubby's going to counter with five Absolutely. players. Brings in the second unit. Pugh, the only substitute for Kansas. It's Gregory who comes in to replace him. And there's Bradford bending over, getting his breath. The guy that's shown more stamina than anybody else is Chenoweth, which is amazing for a seven-footer. This Kentucky second five really gave them a boost in the first half. The starters ineffective at the beginning for the Wildcats, and this group helped bring them back from eight down. Sure, and, and you know, Jim, not only are they talented, but they're rested and talented. Smith, three-pointer, his second of the game. That's 20 bench points for the Wildcats. And let's see if they're going to trap half court. No, they go back into their zone. McGlure patrolling the center. Ten on the shot. Peterson splits the defender, sets up Pochi for an open three. That ties it back at 48. Isn't it amazing? Every time Kansas will be patient, get three or four or five passes in the half court set, they're effective. Good job by Gregory. You know you've got to get out there and face up on Prince because he'll take that long jump shot. Tomorrow. Tipped up. Got the long arms. Great hustle by Chenoweth. Boy, they had three chances inside, and Chenoweth stood the ground there for the Jayhawks. Boy, it is amazing how he's matured as a player in just one year with his stamina. Gregory flies and will go to the line for two. McGlure on the block. Let's take a look at the East bracket, uh, Billy. And uh, Duke versus Southwest Missouri State. And Temple against the Miami Purdue winner with Purdue really in control of that thing. How about Duke versus the other three in that field? Well, obviously, as I, we've all said that Duke was the prohibitive favorite coming in. I'm going to remind everybody, 1993, this very Kentucky team, they had a 31-point scoring margin average going into the final four in regard to the games that they won in the NCAA tournament leading up to the final four. But what about that regional here? That was a final four when they swept four games. How about against those three teams? Well, they're, the, Jim, they're the favorite team. They've been better than anybody throughout the course of this year. And what about Alford's team, the way that he's got Southwest Missouri State playing? I don't care about any team. I mean, if Duke <laughs> plays Duke's basketball. I, I go back to Wait, the story. Wait, did you pick Duke not to get to the final yeah, four? Yeah, I thought okay. Cincinnati beat him never even got to play him. But, you know, I go back to that story that my wife said to Mike Krzyzewski back in September. Gee, I heard you're going to be good. He said, no, Barbara, we're going to be very good. Hogan three. He might have been underestimating himself when he said, very good. Nice oh, pass. Look at that. Robertson to Earl. Blocked by Kamara. Earl hesitated. That was one of those where you needed to catch and put it right up. Kamara listed at 6'10", Jim, but he's... He plays like a seven-footer, just like Chenoweth. 
When he develops, as they all do in this Kentucky system, look out that sophomore and junior year. Traveling. And, and we're seeing a lot of freshman mistakes in this game. Trying to do too much too quick. The game plan together. They've started off right with the defense and also being able to put some points on the board. James with nine. Cuts that Purdue lead down to 13. James playing some tough D on Cardinal up the top to Eldridge. Eldridge chased by Hemsley. Mayfield backs it out. Tough cross court pass to Cornell. Miami plays such good defense also, though. Salmon did a great job of recovery on that play. Well, McQuay said a little pick on Bland and able to come down the lane was Eldridge and a whistle. That was an excellent play right there. Didn't get any help till it was just too late. Coming right down the lane. Watch as Elvis comes right down the lane. No one on the weak side understands what's going on. And Bland has to take the foul. That's his first. Bland held scoreless in the first 20 minutes. And that's again what uh, Leonard Hamilton, Hamilton told us. You got to get the big guy at 6'6, 265 involved. That's the only problem is that he was getting the basketball early, trying to make some plays, but also the Purdue defense was just too much of a swarming defense. They play really good coordinated defense. These guys communicate and they play hard. Eldridge will get another at five points in the first half. 32-19 Purdue. Turnover. Just little things like that though, Craig. Little mishaps. You know what I mean? Not even having any good continuity. The ball comes in bounds. You turn around trying to get it going and throw it right back out of bounds. Those are the type of things that will kill you, especially when you're down. Tenth turnover for Miami. Eldridge on the wing, up top, Cardinal. Cornell kicks it. Kimsley on the steal, and that cuts the Purdue lead down to 12, 18-35 remaining in the ball game. Oh, well, some nice anticipation right there. They're, they're shadowing that ball each and every time the ball is picked up by Purdue. The last few times they've been able to get some steals. Miami has picked up the pace really hard right now, cutting off all the angles. And Purdue now is struggling to get their offense going. And the 22nd timeout as Miami has pulled back to within 12. 33-21 here at the Fleet Center. Emmy Award winner John Larroquette returns to television as Royal Payne, an innkeeper with, well, let's just say, an attitude. Don't miss the series premiere of Payne. It's Monday after Raymond right here on CBS. Now the huddles have broken. Leonard, Leonard, Leonard Hamilton and Gene Cady battling one another today. Just trying to, Leonard Hamilton just trying to spur his team on to be a little bit more consistent. You have to be a little bit more forceful also in being able to get good position because Purdue is playing some solid defense. James works against Mayfield. James up top, out of plan, scoreless so far. Jennings, nice post up, couldn't get the shot off, tipped out, chased, saved nicely. Great hustle right there by Jennings. Silvo, 12 on the shot, James the floater, short. James the tip, wouldn't go. Out to Mayfield, two on one to Eldridge. And batted nicely away by Jennings. Oh, he got back nicely. Excellent play. After he made the first save, he was able to get back on defense to make another play on defense. Great hustle by Jennings. Right now, he's outmanned two to one, and he still is able to make the play right on the ball. Great save for Miami. Inside, McQuay. Oh, jump hook in. Somebody must have set a nice screen on the other side because he came completely open with an opportunity to catch the ball and turn before any defender came. McQuay had eight in the first half, now hits double figures with ten. Cardinal again picks up another knee burn. Roll right on over on, on Tim. Cornell will slow it down. Works it to Mayfield. I'll tell you, Cardinal, no, I'll tell you, no wonder he has to wear knee pads. He wouldn't have any skin left. He wouldn't. He certainly wouldn't. Oh, nice feet inside. Mayfield kicks it. 
Around they come. Jam it down as McClay. That was an excellent move by McClay as he caught the basketball. Nice fake up. Step dribble through and a dunk. Largest lead of the game. James back out to Salmas. Really slapped away. Coming down the lane, Jennings rejected by McQuay. Excellent play. Now, now watch McQuay get the basketball from Purdue. What's the up fake, though? The up fake to get Bland out of position. Takes it right on through for the dunk. Super play right there. Good teamwork. 17 on the shot as Hemsley drives, floats it up and in. That breaks a long drought. Very, very long drive, especially since Elvis is right on him all the time. He's going to have to put the ball on the floor and be able to probe a little bit more. Hemsley Rowe with nine. Has yet to connect from three-point range. Bland was called for the hold. And that's going to be two on Mario Bland. Right now it's a very difficult thing. Even though Mario Bland is a big post player, he's playing against a guy in McQuay that's a little bit taller than him and also is utilizing his good angles to get good plays down in the low post. And down to Mayfield, drives it baseline, scoops it up and in. At that time, Jennings let Mayfield go right to the basket and Salmons had his back turned and turned around just too late. Mayfield on the board his first, his first bucket. Two years of junior college ball at Tyler Junior College down in Tyler, Texas. Hemsley to Bland. No one's open. See what I'm saying, Craig? Trying to move around now. Bland is forced to put the ball on the floor. Did a good job, though. Count it. Three-point opportunity and Bland on the board. That's the problem with McQuay right there, though. Didn't move his feet on that play as Bland didn't have anywhere to throw the, th throw the ball. McQuay picks up his first. Well, tonight on 60 Minutes in Alaska, the only thing better than finding oil is not finding oil. Still polluting the state 10 years after the Exxon Valdez. That's tonight on CBS 60 Minutes. Let me check that. The foul goes to Mayfield. And his second. Right now they have to figure out a way to put some defensive stops together right now. Purdue's coming down and moving the ball so very well and executing on the Miami defense. Three-point play for Bland and a timeout. Purdue leading Miami by 13. We'll come back after this. Defending Western Division champions in the SEC. Finished third in that division this year. Smith on the deck with a quick outlet to Jason Smith. As uh, Harrison made the play. Most scrums are going to be won by Ole Miss. Yeah, they, they really do a good job in the, in the hustle department. They go out to loose balls and dive it on the floor. And if the ball's on the floor, you can count Ole Miss is going to be around it. Lockhart with a nice move, just unable to finish with the left hand. He'll surprise you at times with his uh, agility. Big Ryan Lockhart. Good ball movement here by the Spartans when they spread the floor. And uh, this is the man you want to have it in this situation. Creates a wide open shot. Out of bounds, last touch by Morris Peterson. Mateen Cleaves created an open shot. Just uh, everything but the finish for Michigan State. Yeah, Tim, I'm very impressed with the way Michigan State has come out, realizing that there was going to be tons of pressure by Ole Miss. They started out setting some picks. Antonio Smith up top for Mateen Cleaves, freeing him up, and he's been able to at least make some attempts at the goal and, of course, make some great assists. Carter trying to run off picks and get free along the baseline for three point shots. Lockhart again in the paint. Leans in, goes to the left hand. There's that agility I talked of. Beautifully done off the window. Lockhart's not going to do anything quick, but with that body, those big strong shoulders, if you give him enough time to put the ball on the floor, he's going to create a shot for himself. Well, this is this the kind of game that he can uh, exercise that physical approach to the game. Smith. Comes down with a rebound, and the Rebels now with an opportunity to tie or take the lead. But they can really use Lockhart going up against A.J. Granger and also Antonio Smith in the paint. Just let him get in there and plug it up. Flanagan, tough shot. Not a wise choice. Please, nice deep. 
It's rare that you can fake out Jason Harrison, but Cleves left him spellbound there. The well, Ole Miss was at a disadvantage, and Jason Harrison had to make a decision. He made it at the wrong moment, allowing the team Cleves to go uncontested. Bad choice again, this time by Jason Harrison, trying to force an alley oop to Lockhart. Kelly fouled on the way up. A couple of poor decisions here by the Rebels with a chance to tie or take the lead. Well, here's Mateen Cleaves on Michigan State's opportunity to run the basketball. Watch the little fake that throws off Jason Harrison. A little duck back to the left like Mateen Cleaves was going to pass it. Freed him up a path for the layup. Uh, Tom Izzo loves the play of Mateen and uh, the importance that he's brought to the program, the ability to find the open player, and then uh, even today, forced to play without the basketball and try to free himself. Being guarded by three separate Ole Miss guards, and they have kept a number of players on the floor by committee guarding my team. Tonight on CBS, it's 60 minutes, followed by a touch by an angel. Then it's the CBS Sunday movie, Replacing Dad, starring Mary McDonald and Tippi Hedren, tonight on CBS. Thomas Kelly at the strike. Timeout, 11 and a half remaining, a five point lead for Michigan State. All right, the Midwest bracket for the regional. We know Oklahoma is set. We've got a 10 and a 13. We've got Oklahoma with wins uh, over Arizona, and today UNC Charlotte will take on the winner of Michigan State, Ole Miss, and uh, Miami University will be there. Shooting three. Four to four at the line. Jimmy, you know something that in reading about uh, Kentucky that's kind of an amazing thing to me when you think of the incredible history and you've been talking so much about it. 1998 was the first time Kentucky ever won the SEC regular season, the SEC tournament, and the national championship. In other seven years that they've won the national crown, they never had the trifecta before. So Tubby Smith. Really setting the mark there. Can't do much better than that, other than to go undefeated. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this year, second in their division behind Tennessee, which was ousted today. Not just ousted, slammed by what Southwest Missouri State by 30. Tennessee finished ahead of uh, Kentucky in that division, that Eastern Division. Here's Allison. We were talking about his attendance last year in Tampa. That's his hometown. Side of this year's uh, Final Four course in St. Pete. He was there to watch Kentucky beat Duke in the regional final last year. Nice pull down by Pugh. Got that little rest that he needed. This run, uh, Billy, right here. Could give him the lead. Boshi, two for ten now. Just can't hit it. But that was a good shot. Oh, an illegal screen by Allison down inside. That's a big turnover in a game like this. Kind of an unnecessary screen. Tonight on CBS in Alaska, the only thing better than finding oil is not finding oil still polluting the state 10 years after the Exxon Valdez. That's tonight on 60 Minutes. Well, I just like that a, a great coaching thing that happened right there on the floor. Roy Williams directed all his attention to this young man right here tell him, hey, Keep in there and fire up those shots. You want to give confidence to a guy who's having an off day. Teddy Dupay yesterday for Florida was having all kinds of shooting problems. He stuck with it. And you know he can shoot the ball, and eventually he started hitting it. Robertson and Kansas with nine unanswered. Just when Kentucky had its largest lead of seven. There's a senior that doesn't want to play his last game today. 20 points for Ryan Robertson. And I don't mean he doesn't want to play this one. He doesn't want this to be his last one. He's played on Kansas teams with more talent and more promise and more expectations, but they never got to the Final Four in Ryan's first three years. Absolutely. When you start thinking about the best teams of the 90s with Pierce and the France, you have to think that Kansas was right up in there, but uh, they did not win a national championship team with them. They were number one seeds the last two years, yep. Kansas. That's four on Bradford. Gregory in for Kansas. Boy, if you're Gregory, you just want to contain Turner. Don't try to steal the ball from him. Prince, three. He likes that shot. 
And a Kansas run that they've could be a, added to. They've got a five on four here. Boshi, is this the time? Nope. Boy, he just cannot get one to fall. Genoa fights for it and loses control of it out of bounds. Boy, that's two wide open jumpers for the freshman. Big shots. Matt Doherty over there saying, we're using the arm stroke. Hey, just keep firing it up there. It'll go. Try to give him the will. What's happened to Kentucky here on this 9-0 run? Uh, they've, made, they've made some mistakes away from the ball, Jim. You really haven't, you know, they've turned the ball over without getting shots. Padgett, a senior, will go to the line for two. Could tie it. I'm wondering about the fatigue situation now. You get down to 750. Kansas kid's in excellent shape. The Kentucky puts a lot of pressure on your ability to have some legs at the end of a ball game. And they've got two in foul trouble on the Jayhawks side. Four for Pew and four for Bradford. Padgett, the MVP of the Southeastern Conference Tournament. They're going to bring in Jeff Carey, a freshman from Camden, Missouri. And he will spell Pew with the four. Yeah, the object here is to try to steal two minutes if you're Roy Williams. And this is asking a lot. They're kind of surprised that Lester Earl wasn't the man to come in there with a little bit more experience. But we do have more size here. It's an important couple of minutes for that kid. And the tip out. Yep. And Kentucky down one. Patrick just one of two at the line. Prince realizing he can post up on the much smaller Boshi. Padgett with carry on him. They never could get Prince down in the low post, and I'm sure Turner would like to see that setup, but just can't get it. Patrick gets three on the wing, and the three gives Kentucky the lead back. How often have we seen Turner penetrate and dish back out? And there are two guys again with the experience, two seniors understanding how to do it with the clock winding down. Seven minutes to go. It's been a great one, as we expected here in New Orleans. Kentucky leads by two. Nine ties and five lead changes. Where's Kansas going here on this possession? They've got a mismatch down inside. Turner's on channel with the thing. Just lob the ball up in the air. He's got a small man on him. Gregory gets stuck, but gets the roll to tie it at 61. That's a tenth a tie of the game. Sensational individual effort there by Gregory just hanging in the air. Penetrating again, and he lost that his footing. Good defensive job by Boshi and stopping that penetration. Boy, Turner and Andre Miller are two of the toughest guys to stop in college basketball with that penetration. All tied with 6.29 remaining. We look at the game summary, 11.52 to play. That's a lifetime, and Miami slowly chipping away. Rolando down seven. Rebounds dominated by the Hurricanes, 27 to 19, and they just slowly, slowly have tried to work their way back in this one. With all the bad shooting that, that's been going on by Miami, though, the rebounding total is exactly what's been keeping them in it, because once you get the ball, you can give yourself more and more opportunity to get back into this game. 15 offensive boards for the Hurricanes. Under 12 minutes ago, 43-36, Purdue. The number 10 seed in the East taking on the number two seed Miami. Stevens. Now Cardinal, who's been hot from that three point line. He likes that spot, top of the key. Eldridge on the drive. Robinson kicks it. And a shot clock violation. Never could get the shot away. Excellent defense right there by Miami. Raising up the pressure, taking away all angles. And Eldridge couldn't get the shot off in time. 16th turnover for Purdue. A circus oh. shot finds its way down. My goodness, nice play by Jennings. He went to the basket with that acrobatic play. His second bucket, four points, and it's a five-point game in Boston. The Fleet Center sold out. Mayfield at the free-throw line, kicks Cardinal, lets it go, and hits! 
gets. Got to be on Cardinal, though. You got to be there with the ball. Turn the ball over. Cardinal the other way. Off the glass for an easy deuce. Well, our guy just got to run over, but everybody's okay. Definitely so. Fourteen for Cardinal. That's his first bucket. That was just a simple one. He had four threes. That was an excellent play. Look at Purdue doing a great job right now, leading that fast break. Three on one. The clean plays off of the fast break. Robinson with four. And it's a 12-point game just like that. 7-0 run for Purdue with 10 minutes to go. And a 22nd timeout. And that 7-0 run, Rolando, fueled by number 35, Brian Cardinal. Anytime he starts to go out to the three-point line, you've got to be on him, though, before the ball gets there, because he does, too, have a quick release for a big man. And, of course, anytime you run around and try to hustle plays, you're going to find Brian Cardinal at the other end, coming out making a nice play. You may talk about his scrappiness, but this guy, don't forget, is a talented player. Well, 14 points in this game. He had 14 and seven rebounds. And Smith working in on Granger. That's four on A.J. Granger. So Andre Hudson has three. Granger has four. Collectively with Smith and Hicks on the bounce. Very difficult not to pick up a foul when trying to defend either of those bookends at 6-6. Yeah, and, and particularly Jason Smith because you cannot block his shot. If you let him get four feet close to the basket, you can bet he's going to get on the pogo stick and go over the top. Very difficult to block his shot. So he creates the contact that usually results in a foul. Granger checks out. Antonio Smith coming in for him. Antonio Smith, the fourth Spartan ever to grab 900 plus career rebounds. That's tall company indeed. The lead is two. Smith again trying to knock it away from Cleves. His court awareness is what makes him so special. My team better than most. There's the high pick from Hudson. Harrison stays right with him. Harrison's still there. Look at the pressure on the defense. But you're right about Cleves. He never panics. He's always calm. Keeping his ball team in. Antonio Smith with the extra size tips it through. 54-50. Michigan State specializing in offensive rebounding all year. Mississippi did a nice job of stabilizing that stat early in the game, but over 40 minutes, they're sure to get their fair share of stickbacks. Carter still has it scratched in this half. Harrison stripped and fouled on the way up. Peterson reaching in. Well, Michigan State on the offensive board's previous possession as the ball goes up. Look at all the Spartans around the basket. As Smith with a nice little tippy toe finish. Jason Harrison at the stripe. There you see that uh, willpower on the offensive glass. What a difference it makes. At one time, the Rebels were ahead in that stat, seven to one. Okay. Since that time, a 13 to two blowout in offensive rebounding for Michigan State certainly has changed the flow of the game. Although Mississippi still only down two. Shots. Now they've got to solve the problem of putting the ball in the hole and continuing now to stop the Purdue offense. That equals out to 29% row from the floor. A foul whistle on Jennings, and that's going to be four on Vern. So there you have Helmsley, but the thing about it, he's having problems right now trying to get those catch and shoot shots. Because Eldridge is right on him and not giving up any of those in this game. Robinson puts it on the floor, feeds it inside. Kick it back out, Mayfield. 
Three-pointer away. Around the rim and out. Tip. Last touch by Purdue, so Miami comes the other way. 8.33 to go in a 10-point game. Miami's going to have to find ways to put it together right now, too. The last couple of times, we've been able to get the ball inside to James, posted on the low block. Cardinal is back in for Stevens. Simmons comes in for Miami. Cardinal got a couple of minutes. To find a way to free up Helmsley also because they may need him at the end of the game. Free him up after Try the back door right there, another steal. Cardinal comes away, Mayfield playing catch across the court. Well, look at the movement. Purdue just continues to move off every ball. Robinson. Swings it to the far side. Tries baseline. Pulls up. Oh, what a shot. He just took the ball from the left side all the way around the whole perimeter and gets the layup on the right side. Lead is back to 12 for Purdue. Simmons leaves it for James. One on one with Cardinal. Cock ball drop. Look at that. But did you quick see hands by, by Cardinal. And quick feet also. Quickly down in the slam by McQuay with 14. Man, Craig, that's some excellent coordinated plays right there by Purdue. Starting out with Brian Cardinal moving his feet on the James drive and getting the steal to start that fast break. Purdue on an 11 2 run and a 20 second timeout called by Miami. Just when you think Miami has figured things out on the defensive end of Purdue, Purdue comes right back. Comes right on back to him. McQuay does a great job of getting this catch and slamming it on through to finish off a great play also by, by Cardinal. But watch this catch, though. He's able to stop without traveling, gets the dribble down, and puts it on through. It's an excellent play by the, by the Purdue players. McQuay with 14, Cardinal with 14. You know, he's an artist. May I just add, yes, very intense at 6'7", but yet he takes a sketch pad with him on the road. He, he is a player. That's what, I, that's what I see when I look out there. He's, he's drawn up a pretty good game today. <laughs> oh, <laughs> he surely is. 14 and six boards. 11-2 run over the last three minutes and 40 seconds. 7.20 to go here. I have to try to set some double screens now. The single screens is not working very, very good against Eldridge because he's there every time Helmsley pops out. Purdue's defense forcing them to use the shot clock down to six. Rebound stripped. Last touch by Purdue. Miami will bring it back. You got some great hands when you watch Brian Cardinal. 6.59 to go. Purdue by 14. drives to the hole. Six minutes left in the tie game. Steal by Harrison. The outlet to Smith. Uptown. Downtown. From a small town in Oxford, Mississippi, the ninth seed with a two-point lead. And even though Mateen Cleaves is having a pretty decent game, the inability to get him the ball initially really disrupt Michigan State's offense. The Barnes family enjoying it. There's the young son Brandon looking at the scoreboard. There's Carter getting things started for Ole Miss. Attacking the basket, little kiss off the glass. That's what you got to do. Attack and look at Jason Harrison. He's giving Mateen Cleese fits with the denial over the top. And watch a little pump fake. Jason Smith been getting high percentage shots all afternoon. The road to St. Louis. The winner of this game to take on the 13th seeded Sooners and the 10th seed Miami of Ohio. What a tournament for 10 seeds to play the winner of the Kansas Kentucky game. Ole Miss's last lead was at the 17 10 mark at 36 35 until now. A seven point Kentucky run has given them the lead by four. Javance, Billy Packer, Bonnie Bernstein here. All right, Billy. Well, what I think, done. what I think Kansas better be prepared for is Kentucky's press right here. See if they come out after them to try to pick them up full court. 
and shock him a little bit. Instead, they, they, they do drop back. I thought they might pick him up full court, try to turn the ball over quickly, but Kansas probably spent most of that time out getting strategy for the shot. Half court set man to man by Kentucky. Ryan Robertson, foul. shoot three again for the second time in this game. And he thought he had the basket as well. He yeah. was, thought he could tie it with one trip. Excellent follow through on the shot, even though he got hit. It's the fourth on Allison. Tonight on CBS begins with 60 minutes, then it's touched by an angel and the CBS Sunday movie, Replacing Dad, starring Mary McDonald. And Tippy Hedren tonight on CBS. He'll shoot three here. Trying to advance another team from the Big 12 into the Sweet 16. And hey, how about the committee? Kudos to the committee. The last team in was Oklahoma, the 13th seed, the at large team with the worst seed, Oklahoma. And uh, they're into the Sweet 16. Yeah, Purdue was pretty far down that Ten, line. Too, and a lot yeah. of people thought they may not get in. Boy, it just. He and Padgett have just been pure from that foul line. Again, going back to the experience of the seniors. And he has a career high now. Robertson with 24 in a reach around foul on Bradford. It is so contending for a coach to be thinking that he's got the ball in the hands of seniors in these kind of basketball games. You notice Turner seems like he's totally in control of what's going on. Robertson the same way down on the other end. Another Jayhawk falls victim to the foul count. It's Bradford this time. Pugh was the first to go. And Lester Earl. Not winning any popularity contest here in New Orleans. They're going to have to rely on, uh, on Lester here. And you know, uh, Jim, you talk about a guy maturing over time. As a freshman, Padgett played an average of four minutes a game, scored two points and 1.2 rebounds a game. So that form so good. Yeah, now he misses the first. Got double bonus the rest of the way. He had 28 points his first year as a player at Kentucky. Right. Total, not in a game. Total. It's pretty good talent ahead of him yeah. on that team, though. Second one rattles in. Two-point lead. Kind of surprised Kentucky didn't pick up full court after that made shot, just to throw Kansas off track a little bit. Kentucky has brought back uh, Evans with his four fouls. We approach three minutes to go. Padgett now playing Robertson. Boshi for the lead. And the freshman does it again. You said it, Billy. Just keep shooting, and he has shot his way out of that slump that he was experiencing for three quarters of this game. At Kid, nine in the second half. Kid's got a lot of guts. And he's been asked to guard Turner during this set, too. Magic. Oh, there's a push by, was that Earl trying to run through Turner? But this is not all bad. Turner not, you know, we talk about all the great things he does, but one of the things he has problems with is free throw shooting. He's gotten better, though. He's 68%. This senior season. It's double bonus time again, so two the rest of the way. First two years at Kentucky shot 56% from the line. One to tie, two for the lead. And he's been shooting it good today from the outside as well. Now, that, isn't that the first time he's been on the line today? It is indeed. Kentucky back in front and a timeout called by the Wildcats with 2.40 remaining. They take a 20, so they have two full and 120 remaining. Remember, Kansas is, uh, is out of 20-second timeouts, although they do have two full timeouts remaining. Monday on CBS, uh, guys, listen up. Having trouble sleeping at night because your wife's hogging the bed? Then here's some advice. Don't do what Raymond does on the next all-new Everybody Loves Raymond. Monday, 9 Eastern, 8 Central here on CBS. Jim, I think of this Kentucky team. This year, Auburn came in to Rupp Arena, 17-0. Kentucky beat them. Okay, two of Auburn's losses, a team that has advanced to a regional, uh, were against Kentucky. Maryland came in 10-0. They're moving to a regional. Kentucky beat them as well. That was the schedule, not for some reason ranked the hardest in the country. I don't know how it couldn't have been, though. Good switch by Evans. He's now on Robertson. 
Nobody guarding him here. He's Robinson got a shot. Again, adds to his career high. It's a three for a two-point lead. Credit Lester Rowe with a fine screen, and when he picked off Evans, who had already made the switch, there was nobody to pick him up. And as hot as he's been with his career high, you got to stay with him. Magic working down in the blocks, gives it back. Evans, the senior, down and out. And Robertson there for the rebound. Boy, Robertson is really having some game, isn't he? 27 points. He's blowing out his career high. And he's got the ball again. Now Prince on him, the freshman. There they get the switch again. What a possession this is. Under 140 to go and a two-point lead. Trying to make it a two-possession game. Bochi, the freshman over Padgett. And he rattles one home. Boy, I'll tell you what, his guts and the, and the coaches from Kansas telling him keep shooting the ball when he was two for ten. Killing Kentucky from the outside. Boshi and Robertson. Oh, great rebound. Wow, he was able to hold on to it somehow. Here comes the penetration. Robertson, oh, I'm sorry, Turner, did he travel? No, outside. Turner puts that ball down the floor and turns that corner. Back to the line for two. Here he goes, that jump stop. As he goes inside to Antonio Smith for the finish. Down five with 108. Percentages working in the favor of having this guy on the line if you're Kansas. Even though he stripped the last two. And here you see London coming in for offensive and ball handling purposes. And again, Jim, I was really surprised Kentucky didn't press on a made free throw the last few times. Maybe you just turn one over. Let's see what happens here. Down to three and a timeout. Kentucky. A full timeout. I'll be shocked if they don't come out pressing this time. A full timeout by the Wildcats. Will they be the comeback cats again? From five down to three, Kansas ball when we come back. Lock back down, up top Mayfield. Robinson with four minutes left, the Cardinal. Working the shot clock down to nine, down to eight, Eldridge makes his move. There's a timeout, 3.52 to go. Katie still barking. Boy, look at Cardinal, working hard. Floor burns galore. We'll be back. Sixty-five to fifty-nine. Ole Miss needs to blow its horn in the remaining two twenty-seven on the offensive glass. The Spartans were once down seven to one. Our CBS Sports Line stat of the game now illustrates their dominance in the second half. For complete tournament coverage, go to cbs.sportsline.com. From Beth Mowens during that timeout, Rod Barnes instructing his team to go to a two-man game. Look for Smith, Jason Smith, and Keith Carter to go to work. The name of the game from Michigan State here in the second half has been the three C's, cool, calm, and collective. Carter thought he had gotten the timeout after he lost the ball. But Stanley Reynolds on top of it said you did not have possession of the ball when you asked for the timeout. Here's the last play. Carter tries to call a timeout too late. They must. Remember that arrow. It belongs to Kentucky and Billy. I know this is the kind of game you had hoped we would see here, and you. Well, we expected. Said, yeah, and we've never seen a Kentucky Kansas matchup in the NCAA tournament before today. And uh, for you and uh, all the historical knowledge and reverence you have for this sport, what does this mean here? Well, I think it's great, and I think that Tubby did exactly what I expected him to do a few possessions ago, and that is pick up full court. A pass gets it over to London. They're, they're not over the 10 second line yet. Seconds, and they get it apart across with two to spare. Can Robertson do anything else for his team? Saved him right there. They were in some serious trouble. With the lead by three and possession. 45 to play. Which team will advance to St. Louis? 
seven on the shot clock. If she tries to cross over, takes a very difficult shot. And all Kentucky underneath, a three to tie. They don't have to have it now, Billy. No, no, it's much too early to just think three. Get the penetration from Turner and the kick out if necessary. There's the drive to put up. McClure gets it back. What an effort. Back stops Padgett. He'll take the three to tie it. Oh, boy. Can't happen. How about Shepard? You think it's Shepard? You hey, think last this year? This is it. This is it. No timeouts. Boy, I'd get the ball in Robertson's hands. I really would. Seven seconds. Game on the line. Will the champs be dethroned right here? Robertson over to Gregory. Overtime. Going to overtime. It's only fitting. We go into overtime. I'm not believing this shot right here. Well, do you remember the Duke game in St. Petersburg? Do you rem <laughs> you remember how he turned around That's and sir. pumped his fists? Just a report play performance. How about this? He this slides right over. This is even better, though. This was harder. Yes, it was. Play. Yeah, tougher shot. He was wide open on that one. The Wildcats and the Jayhawks will go to overtime to settle this one. More of an explanation on that uh, last play situation. Granger at the free throw line, 69% on the year. Beth, you have more on that situation a moment ago. Yeah, the ruling was, Tim, that Michigan State acquired possession and then was tied up by Ole Miss. Therefore, the defense created the tied ball. They get the basketball. Tim? 117 remaining. The lead could be the largest. It is at 10. A 13-zip run. Ole Miss led 59-56. Immediately following our game, we'll take you to overtime of that Kansas-Kentucky matchup as Smith misses and the quick foul given by Marcus Hicks. Well, the thoroughbred just came up with a bit more stamina and enough plays. Once that is a good strategy there because you know what you want to do with the ball and the defense. You don't want them a chance to set up. And you certainly don't want them to have a chance to intercept an inbounds pass. But I thought what Kansas should have done is gotten the ball in Robertson's hands to start the set as opposed to in the freshman's hands. And then Robertson could have made the decision to pass a little bit sooner or to take a shot. Remember, Roy Williams' side will have to go this extra five with two starters fouled out. And it's a Jayhawk team that really goes eight deep on the season so they're down to six players that have played quality minutes on the season Lester Earls in the game along with uh, Marlon London the freshman I bet you for these players they feel like they've been out here for a week you know what <laughs> London too strong and McGlore Taya McGlore made a huge play on that pageant three just to keep him alive. They were able to see. He sure did. And, and, and also that, 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 that should go unnoticed. You know? Presence of mind to get it back out to the, the right guy. There's where he does have trouble. In traffic, catching the ball. Kentucky started this overtime period in his own. Kansas stays right with their man-to-man. -man. Boy, has Roy Williams done a tremendous job getting this young team into a tough defensive squad. Padgett again. Got Padgett taking over. That's a two, though, not a three. Got Padgett now with 25 points. Now, London and Robertson, the two best scorers that they've got out here from the outside against this zone. That's to Earl. Where is he going? Outside. Glore. Turner stops at the stripe. Freezes the defense. And Prince, the freshman, presence of mind to bring it back out. You think Kansas could be a little tired? to get yep. beat on the boards here. Chenoweth, that's going to be on Padgett. And give London some credit for blocking Padgett out, so they gave Chenoweth a clear shot at the basket. The foul on number 34. It's his second Padgett. on Padgett. It's his second. Jim, I think of 
composure down the stretch against that guard by committee. 84 team for Virginia. Yeah, there, Virginia on moving on. This is these kids from Kansas been told, well, you know, you you had your best shot in 96, 97, 98. So one and one at the line for Chinoweth, who has not scored since halftime. And let's face it, Billy. It's a, it's a bracket that's uh, got uh, a lot of interesting ingredients to it when you throw in Miami and the underdog and Wally Serbiak and his outstanding play here. You got the one seed Michigan State that's been pulling away here in the late going against Ole Miss. You have, uh, well, you've got Oklahoma 13th seed, the last team to get in is alive. And uh, you know, either one of these teams capable, capable of winning here and going on and winning two at the regional. Well, everybody knocking the Big 12, they could have up two teams in that region. Oklahoma and Kansas, and there's Turner wanting to take it over the top of a smaller man. And Kentucky staying in that zone. Bushy breaking to the outside, he's got the jumper. Yep, over Chenna with screen. Getting a long rebound to Padgett. Two-point lead and possession for the Wildcats. Boy, it's Turner is just, you know, he's saying, I'm fresher than you are, and going right by everybody. The history is not always good history, but the future is and the present is. I'm an African-American coach, and I'm the second to become an African-American coach at Ole Miss following Rob Evans. He absorbed the opportunity and helped Rob Evans get his career off and running after being a career assistant for many years to uh, Gerald Myers at Texas Tech and Eddie Sutton at Oklahoma State. It was this university that gave the African-American head coach a chance, and now Barnes getting an opportunity. Seventy-three, sixty-two. Again, a number of people will look at the score tomorrow and think, "Ah, oh, this one was well in hand." Well, the score can be deceiving from time to time. That will be the case here. Here's Carter. That ball deflected, and Keith Carter there to take the gift basket. And a quick foul against Keith. And a reminder: coming up on Thursday, CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA tournament will roll on. Thompson Bowling Arena in Knoxville, Tennessee. Auburn against fourth seed Ohio State. St. John's, Maryland, the top seeds holding form in the South region. Out west, Connecticut will go up against the fifth seed Hawkeyes, playing off the emotion of Tom Davis's final games. Gonzaga, the other major story in the west. Now that young man played awfully hard. Played his heart out. Jason Harrison has nothing to be ashamed of. He he was key in the victory on Friday against Rhode Island with his defensive pressure and harassment all over the floor. I'm sorry, not Rhode Island, Villanova. So many games here in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Brown off the back iron. Engstrom just in the game feeds Hunter Carpenter again. And tipped through by Brown. Michigan State, the number one seed, advances to the round of 16 in St. Louis. 74-66 over the Ole Miss Rebels. A 13 to nothing run led by Mateen Cleaves and company, and you can see he, he knows he's been through a war today. So Michigan State and the 13th seed Oklahoma, the Sooners, advance to St. Louis for the regional semifinals for James Worthy, Beth Bowens, Tim Brando saying so long from Milwaukee back to New York and Greg Gumbel. Greg? All right, Tim, thanks. So Michigan State, the fourth number one seed to advance into the Sweet 16 with a 74 to 66 win over Ole Miss. Meanwhile, at the Louisiana Superdome in New Orleans, Kansas and Kentucky are in a time.